everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are so excited today. We have one of the actors from the upcoming movie Christmas Sale here with us. We have Patrick Sabongi here. And Patrick, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, this is so fun. And uh, what we like to do with actors when they come on, we like to ask, what inspired you to get into acting? Wow. It's a loaded question. It is a loaded so question. Long ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I have pretty vivid recollections of, um, uh, you know, when I was younger and kind of fumbling around and not knowing what I wanted to do, I knew, like, I fell in love with life at a very young age. I fell in love with the world around me and the people around me and the stories and the incredible, fascinating things that you can discover about the world by traveling, by meeting new people, uh, by learning about other um, other communities and other cultures. And I knew that whatever I ended up doing for a living would include exposure to these things, to everything life had to offer, every, mm -hmm. every interesting, fascinating story in the world. I knew I wanted that to be part of my part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think acting was a way for me. It just made sense. It was a way for me to learn about new people and learn about relationships uh, and to step into different life stories than my own. Mm -hmm. um, well, and, it said uh, on IMDb that you're trilingual. Is that right? Correct. Oh, that's really yes. cool. So you um, already have like a, a bunch of cultures almost inside you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah. you know, I grew up in Montreal, Canada, and mm -hmm. um, Montreal is a really interesting city. It's one of the most diverse cities I've ever seen. So many cultural influences, so many uh, different voices and faces and people and beliefs. And um, growing, up, growing up in that environment, uh, I think had, was a big factor. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So did you start like playing roles in high school or in like in theater or how did you kind of first get going yeah. and trying this out? Um, I was actually in dance to oh. begin with. I mean, mm -hmm. even before that, I was, uh, uh, I studied martial arts for a very okay. long time, um, kind of my whole life. And um, there's something, uh, the style of martial arts that I was doing uh, at the time, I was doing Hungar Kung Fu, which is a Chinese uh, martial art that's based on basically mimicking different animal movements. There are, you know, five central animals that you mimic in this martial art, the tiger, snake, crane, leopard, dragon. And um, there was something about embodying these different animals that, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was invigorating and I felt in my body and I felt connected uh, and very expressive. And so I kind of credit that as kind of my first foray into performance. Mm -hmm. um, and then it wasn't until high school, I was already in dance and performing in dance shows that I kind of switched from dance to drama. And the first thing we did in our drama class, and this was Mr. Cohen, Mr. Sheldon Cohen's drama class in grade 10 at St. Laurent High. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I was actually Sir Winston Churchill High School at the time. Uh, nice. And we, uh, he staged a, um, a mock courtroom. Oh, so it was a kind of an improvised play. That was a trial where we uh -huh. put society on trial. That's it heavy. Kind of deep. It was <laughs> kind of, you know, ambitious and heavy. <laughs> but you know, there were judges and there was a, a jury and then you know, I played the defense and then there was the prosecution. And we improvised this play for several classes and that was my first exposure to to yeah quote unquote conventional acting but i knew that's what i wanted to do i was like uh -huh. oh this is what acting is it's yeah. a story believing in a, a fictional narrative and stepping into it yeah i'm in well props to you said mr cohen yep yeah big props yeah. to sheldon cohen that yeah, that's well. great. He'll do his thing. Yeah, very cool. Uh, do you remember your first role in, as far as in film or TV that you ever got? Oof. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I do, unfortunately. It might go well. <laughs> um, it was in this, you know, I had been doing theater for a while, and then uh, um, my first acting role was in a movie with Matthew Modine. Uh, please do not go look it up. Uh, the movie is fine, but my, yeah. Uh, it was my first day, you know, it, it was yeah. called Redeemer. It mm -hmm. was called Redeemer. Yeah. And uh, I was an inmate in this prison uh, environment and uh, it all just kind of fell apart. Yeah. Uh, I was, I, you know, rehearsal <laughs> was okay. And I, this character and there was an accent and there was all this stuff. And then th at the, in the very first take, I spoke and I, I was using my theater voice and I was like, oh, this is too loud. And then I was in my head and then I was, he was looking at me like, why are you speaking so loud? And then I was self-conscious and they were still rolling and then the accent fell apart and disappeared. And then I was too loud and too quiet at the same time. It was oh just- Oh my gosh, that's- And then the whole rest of the day was like an embarrassing blur. Uh, I'm still in the movie apparently. Hey, you have to start uh, somewhere. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. Did you just freak out when you got the role? I did. I was thrilled. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, oh yeah, I, I was so excited <laughs> and over prepared and just over just over hyped and over yeah. eager. That's over. yeah. That's funny. Yeah. That's cute. <laughs> so you've done a lot of stunts work. I saw yeah. on your IMDb. And uh, yeah. so what is that like being part of kind of a stunt team on a movie? Uh, it is. Um, it's one of the great joys in my life, like being part of a stunt team, uh, performing physical sequences. It's like n never having grown up, you know, but now everybody's super skilled and smart and intelligent and responsible. And so you get to be really physical and play pretend and just uh, go for it. and. Uh, it's lots of um, you get to get all your energy out, um, but being part of the team is this ultimate trust because everybody's so accomplished and skilled that you, you get this freedom to know mm -hmm. that they're looking out for you, you're looking out for them, and we're going to do this thing together and just have a blast doing it. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's. Have you ever had to I, do you know, anything? My hat really goes off to the stuff. Yeah. Have you ever had to do anything kind of scary? as a stunt or that was a little risky? Um, I mean, everything you do, you know, in stunts is, is has a, an element of risk. Uh, we do what we can to mitigate that risk through rehearsal and planning and, you know, thinking through everything. Um, but, you know, the moment of truth where you just gotta trust the rest of the team and go, I guess, you know, most of what I've done is in stunts is fighting. Um, so, you know, with swords and weapons or empty handed or, you know, getting thrown through glass is always a lot of fun and kind of scary and tricky because it's still glass and, you know, you're probably going to walk away with a couple of bruises and scratches. Um, stuff in cars, especially when it's high velocity is really scary. Um, especially when you lose traction, you start going sideways and it's really loud and dramatic. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been in a couple tricky spots, but, uh, luckily, you know, I've had good luck and no, uh, no significant injuries. Well, that's good. Uh, I think that would be a very interesting job it to is. have. <laughs> the best gig in the world, yeah. if you can get it, it's really yeah. hard to, uh, it's a really hard industry to get into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so when you're in a CGI spectacle movie, like 300, what is that like? I mean, is it hard to sort of envision what it's going to look like because you're just green screen, green screen everywhere? Like did, did the, the Zack Snyder and the, the team like help you to get an idea of kind of what is happening or how does that work? Yeah. So I, I'm assuming every, you know, CGI, vis effects, heavy movies going to have their own process. But in my experience, um, a lot of those all green screen environments, they've storyboarded the whole thing. And so 
you know, behind the directors we call Video Village, they have these like big Bristol boards, you know, it looks like a high school art project, but they've got all the, uh, you know, all the frames and all the environments um, and, you know, the basic coverage that they're going to get. It's all laid out and drawn out or, you know, uh, printed out and placed up, you know, for the director to reference as we go. So if ever you need to see, or if they need to explain, well, I know this looks like this little rocky outcrop, but then we're gonna build it up and it's gonna be this tall. So you're gonna be hiding behind it, then you can come out. So they have the sketches or the, uh, the storyboards on set for us to reference. And with 300 in particular, you know, we pretty much shot the graphic novel, Frank Miller's graphic mm. novel, shot for shot. So. Mm. If there were any like visual questions, it, it's really all in the graphic novel. Mm, that's true. That makes sense. I always thought it must be kind of tricky to you just either have to sort of trust your uh, trust your director uh, and you know, director of photography and everything that, uh, but that it would be hard to kind of get in the moment uh, when it's when it's all you know just this blank warehouse basically you're shooting in with yeah. screens. <laughs> Actually, 300 was literally a blank warehouse. I think it was a, uh, it was like a, a, a Walmart or something like that that was, that was being closed down. Mm -hmm. And we, I think we scuttled in and shot the movie, you know, in the empty space before they tore it down. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So you have been, uh, you've have a role in the Arrowverse on different shows, um, and on the Flash mm. and on Arrow and. I I'm just wondering what that was like to be part of. Ah, oh, um, it was so fun, and I've been on the Flash now for seven seasons, uh, some seasons more than others, and that's mm -hmm. uh, and my character from Flash has crossed over into the some of the other shows onto Arrow and I think Supergirl. Um, it's I love it. I love that universe. I love the fans. Um, I love how invested everybody is in those storylines and the cast you know some cast members have come and gone but we're all still really close and um it's just a positive environment to work in it's a job mm -hmm. you know like any other but um because it's you know it's comic book world and it's such a vast universe now with so many interesting characters and people and um i just it feels like coming home going back to work on flash mm -hmm. that's cool yeah so you had a role in Virgin River and mm -hmm. in season three, you were Charmaine's fiance, right? Correct. Yes. <laughs> um, so they, they ended the show on a pretty big cliffhanger. Of course, we won't talk spoilers, sure. but uh, that uh, is pretty, it must, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> it is really exciting. And, you know, speaking of the fans, um, Virgin River has some very dedicated, oh yeah, uh, attentive fans. Like mm -hmm. they don't miss anything, yeah. and they're very invested in their storyline, and <laughs> very invested in you know looking out for Jack, and uh, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. Were they mad? At you? I mean, again, we won't say what were they were. Were they gonna? <laughs> did you get any? Uh, they kind of mad at you. <laughs> what are my intentions and what yeah. are we doing here and what is really going on yeah uh, but th there's no greater joy for an actor than to work on something that people care deeply about mm -hmm. uh, and so i'll do that like if if i want to be if they want to see me as you know as an antagonist that's cool that's not how i see you know, my job is to live the character and y'all's job is to judge them right yeah yeah but it so where's that is that that show shot in vancouver it is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it seems like a great group to be a part of. It is, yeah. It, it, that's another step that uh, there's just something about, you know, certain productions that you work on. I think the tone of of what you're working on really informs the mood on set. Um, and Virgin Rivers, you know, it's this it's this uh, kind of pretty wholesome environment, pretty positive. Uh, place, even though there's some dramatic conflict and stuff, but um, yeah, the cast is just wonderful to work with and super talented, and uh, and we all got along really well. 
And I know that COVID impacted season three. Uh, was that tough to to shoot uh, with quarantine restrictions and, and everything kind of going on? Yeah, that was actually the first COVID, uh, that's the first show I worked on during COVID. Um, and it was, they were really good though, I gotta say about installing protocols and then helping us follow them. You know, there were teams in place, there were COVID supervisors there, there were arrows on the floor, you know, which direction to walk into the studio, which direction to walk out. The, um, you know, the ADs were really good about, okay, you know, as soon as we cut, everybody masks on, you know, rehearsals with masks on. Okay, now we can take masks off and they come in with the little containers to put your mask in. And um, so they got on top of, of, of the protocols and of helping us stick to them mm -hmm. really quickly, which I have to applaud them for. Yeah. But it was, it was tricky. Luckily when, you know, within the scenes, you could take the mask off and then it was like, oh God, we get to connect and see each other's faces. But yeah, uh, yeah it was yeah. a challenge at first for sure. And I know that was hard with the whole um, hope plot line because of a natural tool and COVID and everything. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think they did the best they could given the circumstances. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Uh, and I think that everybody is, everybody's doing the best they can at the moment, figuring it mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Well, we have this uh, weekend, we have Christmas sale coming out and we already talked with Katie and we had a great time with her. We love her. And I'm yes. really excited about this film. I, I cannot be more excited about uh, being in a Christmas movie with this cast. Yeah, I was, I, I did a double take, you know, when the, when the offer came in, I was like, wait, who's starring it? Like the Katie Sackhoff <laughs> and Terry O'Quinn. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it, uh, yeah. It, it, it wasn't your typical gathering you know personalities for a christmas movie like this but everybody loves christmas in their own way and mm -hmm. uh, we certainly embraced it well and how cool too that her husband wrote the script That's i know so cool. and they were uh, actually while we were shooting they were planning the wedding uh -huh. and then they they just recently got married after we finished yeah. shooting so um yeah, yeah there like was a lot month, of like i think right yeah, yeah yeah so there's a lot of like you know Hallmark wedding vibes on set. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, for people that don't know, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about the movie and your role? Um, well, uh, so the movie's called Christmas Sale, and it takes place uh, in a coastal town in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and I play Luke, who is... Uh, kind of a high school friend of Liz Darling, played by Katie Sackhoff. Um, and uh, they kind of parted ways uh, sometime in the past, and she moved on to, you know, the big city, and uh, she, she got married, and she has a kid. Uh, and when the movie begins, um, that relationship is no longer, and now it's Liz uh, and her daughter, Hannah, uh, and they come back to the small town 
to find uh, Liz's dad, uh, who's now alone and kind of needs a helping hand. And Liz comes back to give him a hand. Um, and in that process is reacquainted with her high school friend, Luke, who I play. And, um, you know, the question is, what is the nature of the relationship now that they're both grown up and single? Yeah, I think that sounds very sweet. And I think that, that from what I've seen, the clips uh, look really cute. Uh, particularly, I think the little girl looks really cute. I think they did a good job with that. She is uh, phenomenal. I'm just, just working with her and Katie and I would just like, she's such a professional, this young woman. Yeah, I have to take my hat off to Emma. She was a phenomenal actor and professional and she just lights up the set when she walks on. Supremely prepared, down for all notes and all adjustments. And honestly, Katie and I would watch her take notes and learn from her and go, that's how you take a note. Just so positive and smiley and bright and always energized. Um, she really was the heart of the whole thing. Yeah, I think that'll be really good. Uh, well, I'm excited. Did you shoot this in uh, in Vancouver? This shot actually in uh, on the Sunshine Coast, oh. which is west of Vancouver. Okay. It's, uh, cool. yeah, pretty far west. Beautiful little area. Is that fun to see it all sort of decked out for Christmas and everything? Yeah. That's in always August. <laughs> yeah, well, when we shoot these in summer and then you got folks in the background kind of sprinkling snow on the on the trees and then it melts by the next take you know but right yeah, I mean they are pros at Hallmark at getting that down oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. They got the, the blankets of snow when they yep. have those those things you know? <laughs> hopefully the you weren't in the mall sometimes when they dress up the Santa's uh mm -hmm. little chair hopefully you weren't roasting too much uh no actually I it was a surprisingly comfortable oh, wardrobe good. knows what they're doing that's good that's good <laughs> well i think it's gonna be fun do you have any like strategies for uh, katie said they didn't do a chemistry read but or building when you do a rom-com like this like building that chemistry or is it just natural uh it just works oh uh that's a good question i've never had to Put a lot of effort into finding that um that relationship chemistry mm -hmm. i think i've lucked out and i've always been able to to find a genuine connection with the other actor and we both know what we're there for we both know mm -hmm. the tone that we're going for and so meeting that person with that intention um mm -hmm. and uh just embracing the process we've always been able to just find that common ground and with katie yeah. and i we had never worked together, but we knew of each other. And I think we both worked in a lot of similar genres. And so we had so much in common and we've worked with a lot of similar people, like a lot of the same people mm -hmm. on the stuff that we've worked on. So it felt like she was an old pal, even though we had mm -hmm. never worked together. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that chemistry wasn't hard to come by. That's good. That's really good. I can imagine. So with Katie, she's so nice. <laughs> she's so nice. Yeah. And so smart and so accomplished. And, and the fact that she was so invested in this, that her and Robin yeah. did this thing together, um, it just made us all root for her and for the show that much more. Yeah. Well, it's so exciting for her because this is a, a totally different type of movie than she has been, been able to do in the past. And she said that it, really is more like more her than this all the sci-fi stuff so i was like yes i get that i see yeah. that now for sure uh -huh. he's forever just making jokes and laughing and being silly and mm -hmm. um i mean you know we love her powerful weapon wielding characters too yeah but she's definitely got a lighthearted side yeah well we like to end our questions with some fun silly questions then you get the holiday edition uh so okay first question what is your favorite holiday drink eggnog mm, very good Straight up. 
Okay. Yeah, with or without rum. That's it depends on the dealer's choice. Either way. <laughs> okay, good. All right. What is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? Oh, uh, I'm going to lose some supporters here. I'm not a big cookie fan. Mm -hmm. I just don't have a sweet tooth. Yeah. I'm not crazy about, um, you I know, envy you. I wish I didn't have a sweet tooth. Yeah. And I know it's such a big like thing in the movie too. There's like this whole, you know, cookie theme running through and I support it and I uh, celebrate cookies. I'm just not, you know, I'm not. Yeah. You don't have a, a Christmas dessert that tempts you. All right. Okay. What is your favorite Christmas song or carol? Oh. Well, um, the first one that comes to mind is Good King Wenceslas. Ooh, classic. I'm not going to sing it. Uh, <laughs> you can play a track if you want. But I don't know. There's just something about that that brings back all of these childhood memories. And it, yeah. I don't know. It's got a yeah. real special place. I like it. That's good. Very good. I always think of um, Mannheim Steamroller, one of their one of the very first of their arrangements that I ever uh, listened to was yeah, their Good King Wenceslas uh, arrangement. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah they do like electronic christmas mu music they're pretty fun um, okay what is your favorite classic christmas movie um uh, 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 uh jimmy stewart in uh, the wonderful, wonderful life life no yeah. question yeah it's a it's a yeah and you know it i'm the I'm the biggest fan of it in my house and I have to like make a case for it every year. Like we have got to watch this and they're like, let's do die hard. And I'm like, we can do die hard too, but we got to watch it's wonderful. Life. It's not Christmas without it's wonderful life. It's so good. It's so moving. So I mean, it's interesting because it's really a pretty sad uh, premise, you know, for a movie. Uh, if you think of something with the holidays, but, but I think it's that Frank Capra, energy and the 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 ending um yeah. that makes it so heartwarming yeah mm -hmm. yeah good one all right uh what which do you prefer scrooge versus the grinch which would you like best oh which do i prefer yeah which is your favorite oh, who do i hate best oh yeah <laughs> uh huh i think the grinch Grinch. Um, I mean, they both come around in the end, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I feel I, I've got a soft spot for for Grinch. I think he's he had a bad he got a bad rap. He's just in a bad situation, you know. Well, Old I mean, guy. those who's down in Whoville were being very loud, and I think if I was not able to sleep, I would also become very Grinchy. <laughs> yeah. They're and making all those loud they noises. Him and they, you know, they ostracized him and ridicule him and villainize <laughs> him. It's, you know, that's not, it's, that's not a fun place to be. I'd be upset too. <laughs> I don't know why he has to take the last can of who hash. I mean, that seems to be going too far. <laughs> he takes every. Listen, you push a, you push a, a range to their limit and you're going to get, you, you know, you, yeah. you, you're going to get what you're going to get. I think so. All right, which do you like better, clear lights or colored? Ooh. Um, can I, can I, can I, can I choose a third option? Sure. <laughs> I like them when they're all the same color. Oh. When they're all blue. Oh, blue. Yeah, I'm getting into that now. The monochrome. Oh, cool. Like, yeah not all white not all like yellow or something but like all mm -hmm. blue and like the multicolored i think it's 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 Too a little much. lazy you know what i mean it's like whatever <laughs> whatever goes anything goes no like make a choice you're like pick a color <laughs> pick a color you know? yeah yeah i hear you i think that's good okay uh which would you rather do be in a snowball fight or build a snowman uh i i don't know how to do one without the other I, I'm, yeah, it's a trick question. You have an angry snowman. All of the above. <laughs> okay. Would you consider yourself a good gift wrapper or not? I'm an excellent gift uh, wrapper. I'm not excellent gift purchaser. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think if I had, I, if I planned ahead a little more, 
kept detailed notes all year, all of that. But uh, I'm a lot more confident in my gift wrapping skills than I am in my gift procuring mm. skills. It's hard when people are adults because they pretty much can get what they need, you know, for the most part. And so it's like, yeah. I don't know. What do you get? <laughs> and they're not impressed. Yeah. But like my dad is impossible. The dollar store, you know? Yeah. My dad is so hard and he, yeah. he has, he can't hide it when he doesn't really like your present. Oh. Like he is impossible in that way. And mm -hmm. so they just like, huh. Why do I even bother? <laughs> yeah. I'll go back uh, to making things. Yeah. You know. Making food. He, he, he yeah, usually will like that. <laughs> yeah. Making arts and crafts. Yeah. Well, last question. Do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? You probably should being up there in Canada. I do. It, it's super itchy though. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I think it's hilarious and really cute, but... um. I have to wear like full length sleeves underneath it. And it's, it's a bit of an, it's a bit of an ordeal putting it on. Mm -hmm. I think I need a new one. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What's your um ugly, what is, what does your ugly Christmas sweater look like? Well, it's, it's like a, like a cardigan. Oh, okay. It's to button it up and it's got this, like this big collar that rolls down and it's kind of Navy blue. And then it has all these random Christmassy patterns all over it. And then like the wool kind of balls up too. So it's like this whole 3D textured colored button mess and everything's a little bit too big and too loud. That sounds scratchy. Yeah. And it's super scratchy, <laughs> super scratchy. No. Yeah. Uh, well, you did it. You answered all the questions. <laughs> Congratulations. Quiz done. Pencils down. Well, do you have social media that you'd like to share? Sure. It's, uh, I wasn't very creative in choosing my handles. It's Patrick Sabongi, one word. Great. We'll have that all in the description. Make sure y'all check it out and make awesome. sure you make sure you check out the movie Christmas sale. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. And just a quick reminder, there's no better way to celebrate Halloween than to celebrate Christmas. That's right. Christmas sale. <laughs> well, I agree. Check I it agree. out. I'd like to thank Patrick for coming on the podcast. It was so much fun to get to talk with him and get to meet him. And make sure you also check out our interview with Katie. Uh, it's going to be a really fun movie. We're really looking forward to it. And I really enjoy talking to both of the stars. So thank you so much. And uh, make sure you follow the podcast at Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. If you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us so, so much. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our Patreon group and merch store. Please take a look at that. We have a sale going on this weekend at the merch store. So you can get 35% off. It's really fun. We have some new holiday designs. So thank you so much to Patrick and hope you're all doing well. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. Thanks again. We'll talk to y'all later. Merry Christmas. Bye.